as they prepare themselves for the opening hymns, we like to officially welcome all of you this morning for our morning service. And those who are here for the first time, and also those who are visiting, welcome to church. Let us have a first hymn. Good morning, all. Okay, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. The steadfast love. The steadfast As we remain standing, the Lord be with you. Beloved, having entered his gate with praise and thanksgiving, we have come together both on site and online as brothers and sisters in our Father's presence. We come to offer him our gratitude for his goodness and mercy to hear, receive, and obey his holy word, to pray, to intercede, to seek his grace, and to ask his forgiveness of our sins, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Please be seated. Call to repentance. I ask thee, I ask of thee to repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, the times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Let us together as we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith 
we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Together, the general confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our other people in thought and word and deed. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Shall we now all arise for the sharing of peace? Psalm 29 verse 11 says, The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us extend to one another a sign of peace. Give your friend Left, right, front, back, a smile. <laughs> we shall have the praise and worship now. Agape, the stage is yours. Thank you, thank you, church. Okay, God is good All the time All the time God is good Again, God is good All the time All the time God, God is good. good Okay, come, let's sing it Then we'll never have God is good. 
his name. Call upon the name of the Lord and in his name. Call upon the name of the Lord and in his name. Call upon the name of Jesus. For the precious blood, for your name, O oh Lord, for your name, that all of us are saved. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, you are our heart's desire. You are the one, O oh Lord, that we want to submit our life.
for this time, oh Father. Lord, we just want to come in, each and every one of us here. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. When I mention Agape, the stage is yours. You truly take the stage. Wow. Storms by storms. Let us Put our hands together with a round of applause for the Agape. <laughs> Collect of the day. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son, grant us as by his death he has recalled us to life. So by his continual presence in us, he may raise us to eternal joy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have a time of intercession now. Let us pray. Firstly, we pray for our church leaders who has been elected and chosen to be in the PCC as our church leaders. Almighty Father in heaven, we ask of thee to give wisdom to our church leaders as they navigate through unfamiliar ministry assigned to them. Bless their ministry with vision and encouragement. We ask of thee to give them grace to utilize new technologies to reach the lost and bring much encouragement to believers. Help them to build their lives and ministries in your timeless word and your perfect promises. Your unchanging character and boundless love empower our leaders by your Holy Spirit to shepherd your church and deepen our individual walks with Christ. We ask of thee to bless them and their family and watch over their health. Use them for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. We pray for the families in this church. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the families here. I pray that you will draw them closer to you and they submit to you with all their hearts and all their minds. I pray that you will help them in all their doings, for you are the only one who knows what each of us is going through and what waits on us. I pray that you, Lord, will give our families the strength to overcome whatever obstacles and problems that will come their way. I pray especially for those fighting a silent battle. Help them to find peace and comfort in you. Be our guide in whatever we do and help us, Lord, to live a unity as we go in understanding within our families. Please help us, Lord, to love and accept each other as we are with our strengths and our shortcomings. I pray that the wicked one will not prosper when they try to divide us, but we will be kept unified in Jesus' name, I pray. Today, being special for mothers and all the mothers here, we pray for you now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of mothers, for their love, guidance, and care. Bless them, Lord, with your grace and strength and wisdom as they continue to nurture and support their families. Surround them with your love and peace, and by letting them know how deeply they are appreciated and cherished. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now we pray for our church. God, our gracious Heavenly Father, may you pour your Holy Spirit upon our hearts and bless the mission and ministry of St. Gabriel's assist us to faithfully and sincerely share the gospel and witness to your saving love to all people around us. Give us grace to humble ourselves and serve others like Jesus who was a servant of all. We ask this in Jesus' gracious name. Amen. We shall have our tithes and offerings now. Offer to the prayer. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, 
and your majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We shall have a scripture reading now. First reading is from Genesis. Second reading is from the Acts. And the gospel reading is from John. We have Joash and Sebastian to read for us for the first and the second reading. Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 to chapter 9 verse 17. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. God's covenant with Noah. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall on all the beasts of the earth and on all the birds in the sky, on every creature that moves along the ground and on all the fish in the sea, they are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it, and for your lifeblood I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal and from each human being too. I would demand an accounting for the life of another human being. Whoever sheds human blood by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number. Multiply on the earth and increase upon it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth? And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading, Acts chapter 17, verse 22 to 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. 
So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands, as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of our poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, for he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Let us all rise for the Gospel reading. Glory to Christ our Saviour. John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it either sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me, because I live you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them in the one who loves me, the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I, too, will love them and show myself to them. This is the gospel of Christ. Please be seated. This morning, we have Pastor Peter to deliver the message to us. Pastor Peter. Uh, just before I share the word, we have a couple of testimonies. Uh, first, we have a uh, ladies first, of course. Huh? Uh, we have a mother. Because it's Mother's Day, I thought it would be nice to have a sister here who is a mother to share of her testimony of how the Lord has sustained and kept her and blessed her life. So we'd like to invite Eileen Chu up here. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah just uh, the one next to you. Uh, just stand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Eileen, where do you live? Yes. Okay. Um, I am now living in Chiras, uh, but I'm from Suramban uh, originally. So now I'm living uh, with my daughter in uh, Chiras. And um, how long have you been uh, visually impaired? Actually, I'm having um, this problem since uh, young, since birth. Uh, yeah, I am actually uh, partially sighted and I have about uh, maybe 20% of eyesight, maybe less. <laughs> okay, uh, that's good. Now come to the uh, million dollar question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I understand that you're working. Yes. Uh, where do you work? Uh, currently, I'm working with uh, Hong Leong Bank, uh, and I'm 
uh, a telephone operator in the bank. Yes, as you shared that you have a daughter. Yes. Right? So now how do you uh, juggle your time, you know, being impaired as, as well as, you know, to take care of the house as well as to work and then to look after your daughter? Okay. But now, I, I, of course, my daughter now is 23 years old. She's grown up. Uh, but those days, um, as a working mother, we are just the same as uh, other couples, other normal couples, where we will send our uh, child to a, um, a what, what do you call it? nursery or a childcare or daycare. Um, then after that, we will arrange for transport to send her home when we are already home. So, yeah. Right. Um, so, how was it like having to juggle your time over these many years? Uh, it's it's uh, actually the matter of getting used. Uh, and um, you see, actually, the most... Um, uh, of the most uh, difficult things that we are facing is transportation where both of us um, we were uh, um, uh, blind and I only have um, a very limited vision um, so we can't drive so um, those days actually um, mostly we, we, we just have to like uh, yeah it's very hard to explain um, um, uh, in details but um, yeah, it's more to transportation kind of a problem that we have and mostly sometimes we waste a lot of time also. Those days we don't have grab, we don't have uh, 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 those uh, e-hailing, so um, sometimes waiting for cab also, waiting for taxi sometimes when our daughter is sick or whatever, so um, that is where actually we wasted a lot of time. Uh, but uh, okay, it is over and God is uh, always uh, good. <laughs> So, yeah, we went through okay. it. And uh, how old is your daughter now? She's now 23. Okay, uh, she has uh, graduated, is it? Could you give a little uh, info there? Uh, yeah, she's uh, just graduated. Uh, um, and the course that she took was uh, English and Communication. And now she is uh, working with uh, Nestle uh, Regional Office. Well, thank you so much, uh, Eileen, uh, for your sharing. Okay. Let's uh, give glory to God for Amen. the work in her life. Next, we have um, Brother Chi Chao, who will share with us his testimony. Over to you, Chi Chao. Testing, testing. <coughs> hello, hello. Um, can I unmask myself? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, first of all, I am humbled by this opportunity. And of course, we know uh, we have to thank our God. Um, and uh, please forgive me because I'm still coughing a little bit. So sometimes the throat can be uh, a, a little itchy. <coughs> Oh, where to start? Um, I'm thankful because all in, uh, in this, I'm a new believer. I consider myself as in I only start to believe uh, in Christianity in 2020, actually. But before that, I'm thankful to people in Akape especially. Uh, they are being very uh, nice to me and they are being, well, basically when I see them, uh, before when I know them, I want to be like them, you know. Um, I know David, I know Caleb like way too long, <coughs> if you ask him. But, uh, you know, sometimes uh, Caleb or David will just say, you know, if you ever have any questions uh, about being uh, a belie uh, believer in Christ and all that, you can just ask me, you know, or we can just talk about it. There's no... Uh, you know, they don't hide anything from me, uh, and I see the way they lead, they, 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 uh, 
go about their daily life and believe in this God. And many, many years I know them, I think at least from 2009 and so and so on. So as you know, many, many years, um, and people keep asking me, why do you still not believe in God yet? You know, what is happening? And I said, I don't know. And in 2020, just to fast forward, <clears throat> my sister uh, got a stroke attack and suddenly, you know, my world become like I have to handle everything and, you know, I have to visit her in hospital and things like that. And one night, I, go, I, I was home alone and I just want to have a good sleep so that the next day I can face my challenge and, you know, and things like that. And for whatever reason, of course, that time I don't know for whatever reason I said, but now I know, I think... And, uh, you know, God has been knocking my door. It's like, hello, I think now is about the time that you come back to me. <clears throat> so I was praying at home. You know, with, um, like people keep telling me and people prayed for me before, you know, even before I was a believer, people prayed uh, for me. And that day I prayed a simple prayer. I said, God, everybody is telling me about you, about this Jesus, you know, if you are there, can I just have a good night's sleep? That's all I wanted. I just want to have a good night's sleep. If you are up there, you know, if you hear me, I want to experience it. I want to know. And guess what? I sleep like a baby. You know, at the night, I would go on my bed. The only thing I hear in my head is, just have a good sleep. Tomorrow will be fine. You know, it's almost like I'm here. I'm always here. You know, tomorrow will be fine. So the next day I woke up and I told my sister about it. And I said, you know, yesterday I prayed and, and all that. And my sister said, well, that is really cool. And this is like, you know, I just prayed about it. And you know, I have a lot of stress at that time. I don't know what to do. Uh, a lot of things to handle and all that. But how can you have a good sleep? My sleep is like, so peaceful than ever, you know? And I said, okay, this can't be any coincidental or anything. Must be, there must be a God up there. So fast forward a few weeks, a couple of weeks, a pastor came to my home and um, uh, she, he was talking to my sister and suddenly my sister was doing the salvation prayer. You know, and then I'm like, okay, what am I waiting for? My sister is there, you know. So I prayed like a few seconds just after her and here I am. Uh, I have a lot of brothers and sisters and family members now because of uh, Christ, you know. I thank you for this opportunity and hopefully that will encourage you in some ways. And uh, yeah, and uh, praise, praise to our God and praise to our Lord. Thank you. Right, thank you, Chi Chow. Yeah, that shows how God works in mysterious and wondrous ways, how he touches us in uh, coming to bringing him uh, in, into his presence to get to know him. And uh, this, this time I'd like to share uh, what's on my heart. It is sharing the gospel or sharing the good news. Let's just bow in prayer. Father, we just give thanks to you, Lord, for a wonderful time of worship, and we give glory to you because you are the living God that dwells within us and amongst us. Father, as we turn to your word, that, Lord, you will speak to our hearts. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. sharing the gospel or sharing the good news. Well, let me tell you that I know something about you, each one of you. A couple of truths about you and about myself. And this is uh, from God's word. It's from the lips of Jesus. In Matthew 5, verses 13 to 16. If you can recall, uh, that was preached sometime, uh, Pastor shared that. 
you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. This is what Jesus said to the disciples. And you and I are his disciples too. And it applies to us. And this truth needs to sink into us. That we are the light of the world, Jesus said that, and you are the salt of the earth. Now there are a couple of things that we can glean from here to learn. One is that the usefulness of light and the usefulness of salt. Now, as was shared before, that the usage or the purpose of light is to shine so that we can see in the brightness of the light, in the midst of darkness. And salt being used as a preservative to keep meats that are decaying so that it will remain good. Well, of course, you know that in the olden days, there's no fridge, no ice cold pack. And uh, the, the only solution for the, the, the common people, the fishermen, was to uh, use salt or the, the, the farmers for the animals to, once they've killed, is to use salt to rub onto the meat so that it will prevent it from decay. And here Jesus in this passage tells us, firstly putting out the situation of the world. The situation of the world is, it is dark, full of evil. And we all know that corruption, deceit, lies, violence, and all that's contained in this world, darkness. And people can get lost. Even we Christians, if we strayed away, we can also get lost. And then to do with the salt. Salt is to rub into the meat that's decay. The world is in decay. It is corrupted. So is that kind of condition, that bad condition that the world is in. But we are, Jesus said, the light to shine and the salt to, in a sense, savor, uh, flavor the meat to prevent it from decay. Now, what's the opposite of usefulness? What's the opposite? Useless. Yeah? Useless. And then God, Jesus did warn us that for light it has to be set on the hill so that it can shine the light. It cannot be kept under a measuring bowl or they call bushel. And for the meat, the salt has to be rubbed into it to prevent, pre prevent decay. Otherwise, if not being used, salt can become useless. It loses its effectiveness and it will be trampled underfoot. So there is a declaration that Jesus made, you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth. The light cannot be hidden and neither the salt to be uh, becomes useless and being trampled underfoot. So let's keep that in mind that we as God's people, God's chosen, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, remember that verse? You are a chosen ray, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, and that you were once in darkness, you were taken out of darkness, and put into God's marvelous light. So in other words, God is telling us that you are distinctive. 
you are separate. As in Romans 12, too, it says that you are in the world, but not of the world. There's this distinctiveness in us from the decaying dark world. There's such a contrast there that you and I need to be aware of. So the reminder that that's my first point of being in the presence in the world. We are distinct, separate. We are to not just hide our light, nor prevent or stop preventing the meat from decay. So we have to be available for the Lord's use. The presence, being present in the place is good, but not enough. St. Gabriel's has been in existence for over 60 years. 10 years in the school, or at least over 10 years, and the 50 over years here in Sungai Besi. And when we moved here in the 70s or 60s, the late 60s, came the first wave of evangelism. And many of you are the fruits of that campaign. Is there another campaign to come? Another wave? As we see the high rise of Razak City and Razak Mansion. So presence is not enough. We have to do something. We can't, we, no, the people up there will be looking down at the roof. All they see is the roof. And what's happening inside, they don't know. The activities that goes on in the church, they're hidden. So that brings to my next point of participation. Or as John Stott would say, it's penetration. To penetrate the salt deep into the decaying meat. And the light to shine, penetrate the darkness. So we have to be that, to be in the presence. Not only presence, to be participating in the community that God has placed us in. There can be a lot of activities here already, praise God, that things are happening for some time. Uh, we thank God for the Boys Brigade and Girls Brigade. Uh, next week they have their enrollment service. Well, they had beforehand did a recruitment campaign and over the years have been doing that. And through that participation, that going into making inroads into the community that they can draw out the young people, the non-believers, that they can come into the kingdom of God. And we've been running tuition classes in the flats some years back, and also a special class for special children that uh, Mary and Co. have been doing well. So these are opportunities that we can make inroads rather than just stay as we are, but we have to participate in the community, get to know the people, not just only the community here, but the place that we work in, your colleagues, your college schoolmates, we can make inroads to make friends with them. A participation. No, John, uh, sorry, uh, Romans 10 in verse 14 says, How can they call upon 
the one whom they have not believed in. So non-believers, they know very little about the Christian faith, about Jesus. So how can they know or call upon Jesus whom they have not believed in? And then the next question that Paul raised was, how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? So if there's no message, no making inroads into the community, people will not hear of this good news. So let us, as a church, be involved in a community. Well, I'm glad that uh, Grace and Larry, they've moved back here into Raza Mansion there. And uh, God willing, as they continue to stay there, that they'll be, on, in a sense, making inroads there of touching base with people there. Already they're starting this pickleball game. Huh? to demonstrate, to, to sort of befriend, get to know the folks there. Even though there's the Baptist church, that they're making inroads there. Let's not be worried about that. Let's join company, be in partnership, to do the Lord's work together. Your presence, not just only here, but to participate, to make inroads, to penetrate, into the community. And my third point is, as we have done so, we can then make proclamation. We can proclaim the good news. And coming back to verse 14, chapter 10 of Romans. How can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? And verse 15 says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So you and I are to bring the gospel message, the good news into the community. We are to share. Now, sharing the gospel doesn't mean that it is only in a narrow sense of the word just sharing Jesus dying on the cross for you, but it's the whole of life of how God answers prayers, how God guides us, how God gives us sleep, a good sleep, as we share. How God protects us and keeps us so these are good news that we can tell people that God is for real. He's alive. So we can proclaim that God is with us. And God is in us. And they too can have this hope of salvation. And looking at verse 8 of John, uh, Romans 10. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth. And it is in your heart. That is the word of faith. We are proclaiming. This Paul declares that. Now sometimes we think that Sharing the gospel is so tough. We don't know what to say. You know, we are tongue-tied. You know, when it asks a difficult question, we don't know how to answer. We can leave that to the expert. But really, when people are seeking and wanting to know, we can lead them into faith in Christ Jesus. Back to verse 8 again. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. Both word and faith is a couplet. You cannot separate the two. 
You may just say the word, but not mean it, it doesn't work. So you need to speak the word from your mouth, declare, as well as to believe in your heart. And then verse 9 says, that is if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's a declaration, the truth of God. We can depend upon the Holy Spirit to guide us. That he's also our partner to work in the life of the non-believers. Firstly, to confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. And this is an indicator for us as we talk to somebody, whether they really declare that. And secondly, importantly, is that to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And then we can later go on to explain about the death of Christ on the cross and so on. But we can lead them into the sinner's prayers. So when they declare, when they believe, the word of God says they will be saved. That is when we, in our hearts, believe, therefore are justified. And we declare with our mouth, we are safe. So that's a miracle, the, the remarkable truth of God that we need to depend upon, to rely upon him, to guide us. So here's a challenge for us, brothers and sisters. It is a lifestyle that we, you and I are to live to remember that we are the salt of the earth and that we are the light of the world. A daily demonstration, a daily living. We cannot deny that because Christ has called us to be the salt and the light. Otherwise, if we do nothing about it, it becomes useless. Therefore, a challenge to us, each one of us, is to respond to this truth that Jesus works in us. Jesus works in people. That we can depend on him to guide us. So the coming months and years ahead of us is to rise up, to be counted, and no longer be in a comfort zone not doing anything. Just come to church, pay our tithes, worship, and let's go back home. But let us shine for Jesus. Let us be the salt in our community. A lifestyle that you and I are to live. And the late John Stott calls it the incarnational mission that he has given us, God has given us. Based on uh, John chapter 17, verse 18, the priestly prayer of Jesus in verse 18 says, Father, you have sent me into the world, and I have sent them into the world. So that's a mission for you and I to continue to make known the gospel, to make known the good news that God is alive in this dark world, in this broken world, in this decaying world. Who will go? Who will preach unless they are sent? So let's not have the attitude or the wrong perception that we just do our own thing, just mind our own business. No. But be that influence in our community. 
That is, we can become, our feet will bear the good news. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And let us be that. So as I close, I would want to challenge us is that as God has spoken to us, let's say, yes, Lord, I am the light. Yes, Lord, I am the salt of the earth. Yes, Lord, I will obey the great commission in Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all that I have spoken or taught. So you and I have that mission. Let us make that our lifestyle. Let us not only just be present in the place. Let us be participating. Let us penetrate the darkness and the decaying world. And let us have the opportunity, pray, to proclaim the good news of our Lord. So let us rise to our feet. If the Lord has spoken, rise to our feet and say, yes, this is what we are. To be distinctive. To make that our lifestyle. I'd like us to stand and I'll pray. And we thank God, too, for our visually impaired friends here. They have been making inroads into the sighted community. They have joined Reverend King Wook to go up north to share the gospel, and they have seen results. So whatever state, condition we may be in, we still can be an instrument and a vessel for the Lord. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving Father, we want to thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ that he came to die for us on the cross. And that, Lord, we can be saved. Lord, we declare that with our mouth that you are Lord of our lives. And we believe in our hearts that you, Father God, has sent Jesus and raised him from the dead. And Lord, we pray for this miracle of stirring within us as a church to rise up to be counted, to be your light and your salt. Lord, may you bless the church and each of us that we may be faithful and obedient to what you have said to us. So bless us all, Lord, and we just want to receive your blessings right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Let's be seated. Thank you, Pastor Peter, for this morning's sermon. The apostles greet now. Let us all rise to our feet. Do you believe in God? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in his son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This coming week, we have five uh, birthdays, mainly Zane Wong, Mike's grandson, Daniel Chen, Philip's uh, son, David Xiu, Daniel Gore, and Alice Tam. Let us pray for them. As you celebrate your birthday, I give thanks to God for the placing you in our midst in this church. May your day be filled with joy, reflection, and hope for the year ahead. And may God continue to bless you and watch over you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. If we refer to the bulletin, this There is one that is not in the list here, and I just announced it over here. The Agape, uh, sorry, Agape Group will be having a workshop okay, this afternoon all right, in our midst, together with the music ministry, after the coffee corner later on. And then those who are still hanging around, you are welcome to be observers in this workshop. All right, the rest are in the bulletin, and uh, thank God, uh, Shalom Home Fellowship has collected 470 for the uh, sambal seal. Is it nice? Uh? Wow. That is very good. All right. I pre presume that this is a very good sambal. All right. It's for the good cause for the Orang Asli Youth Camp coming on the way. All right. As you can see in the list, okay, these are the people being elected okay, to stand for the PCC. All right? And the first meeting will be on the 28th of May. All right. Captain Rui Ming would like to speak to you now. Uh, hi, morning everyone. So, uh, with the BB and GB together, we would like to invite everyone next Sunday to join us for the uh, BB and GB enrollment service with a team of Rise Up. All right, we will start our outdoor program at uh, 10 a.m. and then continue with the service on 11 a.m. until the refreshment time. Okay, so yeah, uh, inviting everyone to join us in this uh, wonderful occasion uh, on next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Reeming. Okay, so the rest of the notices are in the bulletin. Okay, but donations still are the same date on the 23rd of July, all right? And then uh, you're all welcome for the enrollment service. As Captain Rumin said, it's only once a year where the girls and boys will be enrolled, okay, into this church, all right? As this church, okay, XST, okay, a place for them to have meetings. That means uh, this church, all right, has been with the boys' brigade and the girls' brigade for many years, and uh, they have come from the surrounding areas as well as from schools, all right, in St. Gabriel schools, uh, and uh, girls from pet school, 
and elsewhere as well. All right, you're all welcome. Pastor. Uh, before we say the closing prayer, we shall also do dox doxology, actually. Uh, right. For PCC members, please take note, on the 28th of uh, May, we shall have the commissioning prayer on the 28th of May during, during the service. Huh? It will be a short prayer. And also, you'll be wondering, uh, today is Mother's Day, but we are not, don't seem to be having any special celebration. Uh, that's because... Uh, the council has decided that we are going to have a parents' day on June 11th. So rather than give you half a portion, we're going to give you a wonderful big portion of uh, celebration. June 11th, they combine them together, right? So we are having something great in mind for all of you. But today is a special Mother's Day, so we, on behalf of the church, would like to wish all mothers or mother figures happy Mother's Day. So you have not spoken to your mother for some time, just give a call if your mother is far away. Uh, say hello to her. And if you can take your mother out, that would be great. All right, now we shall say the closing prayer. Uh, let us rise, and after that we will sing the doxology. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for loving us despite our many stumbles and failings. Forgive our missteps and guide us as we seek to serve you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. to love and serve the Lord. Amen. We shall now have the thanksgiving hymn. Okay, let's sing our last song. Pass it on. Wow. 
has showed me love, I want to pass it on. Amen. God bless you, church. <laughs>